Hello and welcome to Scientific Supplement Reviews. My name is Dr. Lukas Stadler and I'm a research scientist at the University of Cambridge. Nutritional supplements are everywhere these days and they promise you better health, better looks, more energy and a longer life. But how do you know which supplements actually work and which are a waste of money? Well, I'm here to review the scientific evidence behind supplements and to share my findings with you. Thank you for watching. In today's video, I will review NAD boosting supplements, which includes NMN and NR. In particular, this video will delve more deeply into the scientific and clinical studies that have been carried out to test the effectiveness of these supplements. And we will see if the promises of more energy, better memory and improved fitness hold up to scrutiny. If you're squeezed for time, there's also a shorter version of this video available, which provides a brief summary of the main scientific findings. The link to that video is in the description below. Now let's get to it. Let's start with some background and talk first about the role of NAD in the human body. NAD is a molecule that is naturally found in all living cells, where it contributes to the normal function of the cell. We know it plays an important role in many biological processes of the body, and we also know that in situations where natural NAD levels are disturbed, the body becomes diseased. One of the processes that NAD plays a role in is the aging process. In younger individuals, NAD levels are high, and as we age, levels of this molecule go down. We also know that naturally occurring NAD levels in the human body fluctuate depending on the diet we consume, whereby NAD goes down when we consume what is generally considered an unhealthy diet and goes up when we eat healthy foods or a calorie-restricted diet. Related to this topic is the observation that NAD levels are disturbed in individuals who suffer from obesity and diabetes. The final thing to say is that NAD also plays an important role in brain health by protecting brain cells from oxidizing chemicals, for example. So, as we have established, and as pointed out on the label of one of the supplement bottles shown here, NAD fulfills many important functions in the body. And since NAD levels drop when we age or when we are subject to stress or a poor diet, the obvious question is this. Can we make up for falling NAD levels by supplying it to our body externally? In other words, by taking it as an oral supplement. Well, there are certainly a growing number of corporations that think so. And some of these companies enjoy the backing of high-profile scientists. But what, if any, is the scientific evidence to show that taking the supplement may help our health and longevity? In order to understand the various scientific studies that have been conducted with the aim of investigating the possible benefits of NAD supplementation, we have to first understand that there are a number of slightly different but related products out there. Firstly, there are products which aim to supplement the NAD molecule itself, the finished product, if you like. But there are also a number of NAD precursor chemicals. These represent the basic building blocks of NAD that are used by the body to make NAD in a series of chemical steps. Different manufacturers produce and sell different NAD boosting products, either a precursor or the finished end product. Crucially, however, they all aim to achieve the same end result, which is higher amounts of NAD in the body and the potentially positive effects that arise from that. Now, the important question is this, do they actually work? And the only way to answer that question is through rigorous scientific and clinical research. So let's review the evidence now. When scientists want to test the safety and efficacy of a potential new drug or supplement, their first port of call are research animals. In this high-profile study from 2016 in mice, the researchers found that adding the NAD precursor nicotinamide riboside, or NR, to the animal's diet significantly extended their lifespan. Another study in mice from Harvard University found that declining NAD levels during aging results in a disruption of mitochondrial function with mitochondria being the so-called energy centers of our cells. They then go on to report that in mice, this decline of mitochondrial function with age can be reversed through NAD precursor supplementation. Using a different NAD precursor, in this case NMN, scientists show in another high-impact scientific paper that administering the NAD precursor to mice can help with the metabolic defects associated with obesity and age. So, encouragingly, there is plenty of evidence in test animals that NAD supplementation has a beneficial effect on health. But what ultimately matters is the effect in humans. So what, if any, is the evidence there? Well, as it turns out, a delve into the scientific literature does reveal a handsome number of NAD clinical studies in humans. Let's start by mentioning the first ever 
double blind, placebo controlled clinical trial of a NAD boosting supplement in humans, in this case using the NAD precursor nicotinamide riboside. The authors of this study report that supplementation with this compound is safe over the time period tested and that it increases levels of NAD in the blood of the participants. Interestingly, they saw some non statistically significant evidence that the treatment lowered blood pressure. However, subsequent trials did not observe this. Next up, I would like to talk about an interesting set of four clinical studies, which all tested the effect of NMN supplementation over a 12-week period in healthy humans. Together, they look at a broad range of potential health effects in fit and healthy adults. Collectively, their findings were as follows. As in many other studies, they could confirm that levels of NAD in the blood were elevated following supplementation with the precursor NMN. One of the four studies reported an improvement in some motor function tests in older men, but there was no change in overall physical performance or skeletal muscle mass. Similarly, all other physiological outcomes that were tested, including metabolic outcomes and cognitive function, did not show any difference compared to taking a placebo. In summary, these results suggest limited effectiveness, at best, with 12 weeks of NMN supplementation in healthy human adults. Lastly, I would like to look at the potential effects of NAD supplementation in a specifically unhealthy cohort of human adults, namely in obese and diabetic patients. To date, the potential effects of NAD supplementation in obese individuals have been investigated in a total of seven separate clinical trials, whereby in a period of between two weeks and five months, patients were supplemented with either the NR precursor of NAD or the NMN precursor. In those studies, again, NAD precursor supplementation was consistently found to elevate NAD levels in the blood. Some of the most common health imbalances associated with obesity are type 2 diabetes and high blood pressure, and neither of these were found to be alleviated in any of the clinical trials so far. This, of course, stands in direct opposition to the encouraging data from mice, which I mentioned earlier. Somewhat encouragingly, one study found that NAD supplementation had a very modest effect on reducing body weight. However, another study could not replicate this finding. Similarly, another study reported a very modest reduction in fat mass and a concomitant increase in muscle mass. However, those effects were very subtle and have not been reproduced in any other studies to date. And finally, a whole host of other health measures investigated in these NAD clinical trials with obese patients did not result in any changes compared to individuals who were given a placebo. So, let's summarize. Is NAD supplementation worth it? Well, having explored the research into this supplement extensively, my view is that while the research data from mouse studies are very exciting, the results from human trials have so far been underwhelming. They certainly do not, in my mind, match the enthusiasm and hype generated around NAD boosting supplements online and on social media. Now, having said that, there are some important caveats to this statement. Firstly, we have had glimpses of encouraging results from some of the clinical studies. Secondly, it is important to stress that all the clinical trials of NAD supplementation in humans that we have seen so far have been very limited in scope and ambition. In other words, the human studies we have seen so far had only a small number of participants and were conducted over a short period of time. So, what is needed are much bigger, multi-center trials involving much larger numbers of participants and, crucially, conducted over a much longer time period. Interestingly, this latter aspect, the time course during which NAD boosting supplements are taken, might hold the key to unlocking in humans more of the same health benefits that we have seen in mice. Because, you see, since the lifespan of a lab mouse is only a tiny fraction of that of a healthy human, the relative time of exposure to NAD supplements is much longer in mice experiments than in human trials. For instance, a four-week supplementation period in mice makes up a much larger proportion of the mouse's life than that same period in humans. It is thus conceivable that much longer human trials may reveal more of the potential benefits of taking NAD supplements. Such trials are also important to identify any potential adverse effects that long-term NAD consumption may cause. So, there you have it. I hope you have enjoyed this scientific supplement review of NAD boosters and I hope it will help you make an informed choice when deciding as to whether you want to purchase and use NAD boosting supplements in the future. Thank you for watching, please like and subscribe and let me know in the comments of any other supplements you would like me to review.